Hi, I'm Lou, and today I'm going to show you how to turn an electric stapler and about $3 worth of PVC piping into the simplest coil gun you'll ever build. Here are the materials. A Stanley Boss Stitch stapler that looks like this, or another one that's similar, tallish, because it has a coil inside that we need. Three half inch PVC elbows, a half inch PVC T, a half to three quarter inch adapter, and a piece of half inch PVC tubing. These usually come in five feet. You're only going to need about 18 inches. A roll of tape. I use electrical tape. A metal object that will fit inside your uh, PVC tubing. There's just a little uh, nut. And then I actually used a hacksaw and cut a piece out of this long bolt that I had. And this, this fits really nicely inside that tube. Um, a nail. I used a roofing nail. Any little piece of non-metallic substance. I had a piece of dowel rod I cut. A little spring. You could get that out of a ballpoint pen. Not that one, but something similar that would work. A little screw. Uh, and in tools, you'll need, like I said, a hacksaw, a screwdriver, utility knife. And these aren't absolutely necessary, but it's really nice to have a drill with uh, like an, I don't know, eighth inch drill bit and a regular screw tip. And the Dremel is really handy. First of all, we need to rip apart the stapler. Unfortunately, it has no screws. It's all glued together. So you can do that by taking your hacksaw and cutting along the seams. Or Dremel, ripping along the seams is really good. Uh, if you don't have either of those, just take a hammer and a screwdriver. You can probably pop off this piece and then hammer into the seams and just basically crack this open. Be careful not to hurt anything in the front part. That's what we're going to need. But this back here doesn't really matter that much. You'll find a lot of other parts inside the stapler, but what you really need is this. The coil, the circuit board, and the trigger mechanism. And then there's also usually a little light. And then it's all hooked to a plug. Using a hacksaw or any other saw, really, cut a piece of tubing that's seven inches long, two that are three and a half, and two that are one and a half inches. Now take one of your three and a half inch pieces of tubing and using the hacksaw cut a slot out of it so that it ends up looking somewhat like a C. What you do with the other three and a half inch piece of tubing will depend on your trigger mechanism. If it's like this one, an infrared sensor that detects when a piece of paper is shoved in, you'll want to just dig out a hole big enough so that infrared sensor will fit in there and you just shove it in like that. You may have to look at yours and see if it's a trigger mechanism it might be a little different. And then on the other side of this tube I drilled a hole and cut my nail off short, put the spring in it, drop that in like this so that when I press down on the nail it goes in and fires the trigger mechanism. And then I just take a piece of black electrical tape and wrap this in loosely so that it won't fall out, but you can still press it. Next, assemble all the tubes in this shape here with the trigger tube in front and this slotted tube in back. And this piece out here you don't really need. It's just for decoration. With all the tubes pressed together, and you don't need to glue them, by the way. Just press them. Slide the coil onto the barrel and then just basically put this piece into that slot right there so there's enough room and then push the trigger me mechanism into your trigger hole here. Here's what the trigger looks like taped in. As you can see this nail is in there and the spring and you just press it like that. And then we're just taping this whole thing together with electrical tape. And use plenty of it so you don't shock yourself later. This cord down here, just tape it to the end. And then this little light here, just kind of tape it up there so you can see it. 
And here's the final gun put together, all taped up. I taped down the barrel just to make it look better. And that light, I plugged it in so the light's on. Here's a quick science lesson on how a coil gun works. Basically, when you put electricity through a coil of wire, it turns it into a magnet. And so, let's just take this metal screwdriver. I'll stick it down the barrel and let it stop right about there. And then when I turn on the power, since there's a hole in the middle of this magnet, it's going to want to suck the screwdriver in like that. Let's see that. There's the screwdriver. I'm going to pull the trigger. Now the same thing in reverse is going to happen with our metal slug. We put it in the gun so that it stops right about there, just on that side of the magnet. And this stapler circuitry is when you push the button, it turns this on for just a second. It just gives a, a pulse of magnetism which sucks the slug into the magnet, but then it turns off and since the slug is already flying, it just keeps going. We want our metal slug to be just on the back side of the electromagnet. To do that, we'll just take a piece of non-metal material and drop it down in the gun. And then this follows, of course, to load it. But what I've done is, using the drill bit, I drilled a hole in the back of the gun and then I'm going to force a screw into it. I've done this before, that's why it's already threaded. But then use a screwdriver to drive that screw in and you can use that to adjust the spacing of that wooden rod. You can push it to the right distance to where this is right lined up with that. And you'll have to play with it basically because you can't see inside exactly where it is but adjust the screw a few times until you get a nice powerful shot out of your gun. Unlike most coil guns, this doesn't have to recharge. You can just repetitively fire it. Using my bigger bullet, let's see how the gun does. Facing a glass bottle. This is what it did to a pop can. If you'd like to subscribe, soon I will be making a coil gun out of this 10 amp industrial stapler. Thanks for watching and good luck making your coil gun.